trials. He's proven himself under the anointing of God. God has brought him through. God has wanted and appointed him to be in this time and place. He can preach and he can teach. What you really need to know that he saves, he's fully sanctified. He's Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. He carries a big stick, which is the word of God. He is not afraid of the devil. So he doesn't have a problem with telling him what street to jump off on. Yeah. And so when he comes to preach, he comes with truth. Yeah. He comes with propheticness that God has placed on the inside of him. Yeah. What I want to say is it's not about the natural man, but it's about the spiritual man down deep within. Yeah. This man has been a life changing as God has appointed him in this house. He is a strong teacher. Yeah. Amen. And anyone that comes encounter with him. He always leave an every impressionable word with you. Yeah. He's been preaching and teaching no matter where he go. If you meet him in the grocery store, he got a word. You meet him on the street, he got a word. You meet him in his house, he got a word. You meet him in his car, he got a word. And he gonna give you a word and a hug, so you are gonna have two things to be reminded of: that God loves you, and that He has a word on the inside. I didn't come to pump him up. I just know he's the same today, yesterday. And I heard someone say that he'll be this until God calls him to glory. Yeah. Because no matter when you meet him, I think he missed his calling because he should be a comical preacher. <laughs> Amen. He got a joke for every occasion. Don't care if he wake up, he got a joke. He go to bed, he got a joke. You just got to be ready. Whatever come up, you got to be ready to receive it. Amen. But we love him. And how many of you love him? Let's just stand on our feet and just give God a good hand clap of praise. If you love this man of God, and we thank God for him. As the choir comes, you may be seated. And before he comes to stand before you, our choir will come with a selection. Amen. More selections. Amen. I'll clap your hands at the choir coming this time. God is good, God is good, God is good. Hallelujah. I mean, 
to God's unchanging hand. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I never amount to anything. But I'm glad to say that I'm on my way. Still I'm going more and more each day. I'm <laughs> 
you want to tell somebody, I can't let go. I can't let go. servant one more time. You increase in him, God. Bring this word alive that somebody will holler around. I feel, I feel. I can't hold out any longer. God, I want to thank you for what you're showing already, God. I want to thank you for how you're blessing already, God. I want to thank you for how you're rebuking already, God. I want to thank you, God, for your grace and even your mercy. God, thank you for healing right now. As you lay your hands on Sister Connie, you will have gone down. Heal my body, you will right now. As the power of the Holy Ghost. I said, the power of the Holy Ghost. The story of the dead man. The power of the Lord of God. Will continue to save my life. The power of your anointed God. Will see this God. To make them as they are right now. We bless the soil and so God that no weapon fall the pieces shall prosper. But God, you're the benefit. You're the benefit in this morning. Thank you, how God. How God. How you gonna come, God? Yes. Set everything free. Thank you, God. Thank you now, God. Well, how you gonna love us like that before God? God, how you gonna teach us to love like that before God? We bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. I greet each of you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you're in the right place at the right time for a mighty word. As a Paul, I, I want to thank you, my family, your last evening for thank you, doing what they did. Amen. Not what they did, but how they did. Amen. I'm a hard fooler, you don't hear me. <laughs> I can smell or see something, put the clothes together. But, you work faithfully and faithfully paid off. Amen. I, I was I was just elated. I really was because all I wanted to do was to go home and mind my business. I can't hear nobody. I was tired. 
they don't want to talk, they don't want to be bothered, they just want to go home and meditate on his words and bring his word to pass. But look at God. God will give you strength when you need it the most. God will give you power when you need it the most. God will take you where you need to take. take. So this is a birthday celebration that I shall never forget. If I live to get a hundred and sixty. But I still remember it. Amen. amen. God can do it. Yeah, God will do it. So I thank you and love you dearly for those accolades. For all the cards, all the gifts, all the monies and plaques, clothing. God knows what you need when you need it. I spread them all out. There's no lay them in the Amen. And I bless the Lord. 60 years. Who would have thought? Hallelujah. So I'm just, just, just so overwhelmed with what God is able to do. This is, listen, this is just the beginning of many. This is how we roll. But that was the greatest. Amen. Amen. Unto God. Thank him. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to see my teacher, my friend, yeah. Sister Maxwell. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's my road dog. <laughs> always will be, always has been. Back in the day when I needed something fixed in my ear, I pick up the phone as a done deal. Merely just a word that kept me, kept me going. I remember I said this the last time she said, I believe she would call me and talk to her. She said, hmm, I believe you the advisor. <laughs> Many times you're like you're speaking and you're talking, you, you can say what you need yourself. Amen. And, and she taught me to believe that. And it worked. And I shall never forget her for defining my gift in this world. And she, she wasn't looking at things that seemed to be broken. She was looking at the glue for those things that was broken. I can't hear nobody. So if you find that glue, it's something there. You better have somebody in your life that can help you find it. Not make things worse for you, mother, but help you find it. And I shall never forget. It must have been 20, 30, probably 33 years ago. That happened. And I've been running ever since. Amen. And I bless the Lord uh, for you. I'll never tell you again. And I, will, and I will always be testifying on it. Because I still plan to be here after you go. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Well, you know, the, the student can't go before the teacher. That don't make sense. It's about to get glory. She know what I mean. <laughs> That's my friend. Amen. And you can't do nothing about it. Amen. Hallelujah. I love all of you. I love all of you. I know. Brother Leo, somebody forgot to call me. They're trying to keep it a sneak attack. But charge it to yeah, the, the head and not the heart. Amen. Amen. And everything will be all right. I know you want to be there for your mission, but you're going to get another chance. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to get another chance. See, one thing about it, mission, we go up higher. Amen. I don't know how much higher we can go, but we're going to try it. Amen. 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 God is just good. Open your Bibles to the ninth chapter of Acts. Chapter A C T S. Amen. God is so good. My friend A, I'm just so happy to see he and his wife and now. Those are my friends. Also, they are. They are. We used to have so many meals together. She said, Where are the meals? I said, They're coming. <laughs> Amen. They're coming back. Amen. But I love them dearly. Those are my friends. 
also an amen, loving, loving dearly that everything is going to be all right. Amen. Let's look now at the Acts, the ninth chapter, the 10th to the 16th verses of that said text and see what the Lord has in store for the house. Anybody looking for a word? Tell you what you pray with me, pray for me. And we're going to find this together. Amen. Wasn't well, nothing wrong with the party last night. I meant nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But the grace of God. See, what's in you is in you. You ain't got enough lids to put over it. Mm-hmm. Ain't gonna happen. Now you're just doing it in a more gentle way. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Mm-hmm. And to him said the Lord of vision, Ananias. And he, he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, I prayeth, and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. And then Ananias answered, to Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to the saints of Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to, to bind all that called on the name thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, now, people of God, certainly the aid of the Holy Ghost, I want to talk about, can God really use your life for two? Can God really use your life? Do, do, do you, are you producing anything that God can clap his hands on? Are you, can, are you producing anything that can generate the power of God? Are, are you doing anything that calls out the name of the Lord uh-huh, at your work broken time? Uh-huh? Uh, can you lay hands and it really the sick can get up? Can you change minds in this life that's going in the other direction? Are, are you really a mind changer? Are you really set in a position where God can use you? Are, 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 are you struggling too much in your own mess? Are, are you really giving up the power of the Holy Ghost to come knock on your door? Are, can you really listen to your assignment? Take your seat, people of God. First of all, it is a mindset. Your mind don't just set on an activity. Your mindset needs to give you some kind of clearance. Do, do I have what the Lord can use? Am I Develop what the Lord has given unto me. The Lord doesn't allow us to have just have children and to have them to run around, but the Lord bless you with things in life that you may develop it, uh, where He can use it. Uh, God doesn't just give you just to say, oh, I'm a apostle, I'm a prophet for you to just uh, brag about who you are. But God gives you just that He can use. Uh-huh. He can use you for his glory. Uh-huh. Uh, so many times we, we get set on uh-huh. uh, who I think I am. I tell us all the time that don't get messed up on titles. Don't, uh, no, don't think that your title has you any greater than anybody else. Uh, you live in a liar. You, you're living in a, a, a facade. You're living in a, an area that God is not pleased with. Don't set yourself up like that. Uh-huh. Uh, understand what. Thing. When God 
is your gift, he gives it to you for a season uh, that we can use you. Uh, are you asking God for the elevation? Are you asking God to increase you? You've done nothing with the gift he's already restored upon you. Uh, is everybody here? Is everybody here really, really doing with me this morning? Because I, I believe that there is a show of celebration here. Uh, uh, God, you ought to be able to be fit if you find yourself in a conflict all the time and, and you always the situation is a problem you got something that God cannot use uh -huh. because some distractions should not be in your vocabulary if you're being used by God your means and your eyes ought to be open unto the presence of the Lord you, you ought to be dialed in and not dialed up but you ought to be dialed in when God gets ready to use you, uh, he wants to use you. Uh, uh, you worry about yourself, but yourself is not it. You don't have enough self to do what God wants done, but your mindset, uh -huh, God can use you. Uh -huh. Your mindset, uh -huh, God can bring you home, uh -huh, and God can bring you through. See, we all busy about the flesh. My God, Holy Ghost is here. We all busy about who we want to be. And we're forgetting about God in the assignment. But if you learn how, little David, to keep God in your assignment, and then God will bring you where you need to be. Uh -huh. God will bring you to fruition. Uh -huh. Not only will God bring you to fruition to the county, but you heal you right where you are. Uh -huh. I, I thought I had a problem, but I thought about how good God is. Uh -huh. I thought about I had a situation, but I thought about God can do it. Uh -huh. Not only can He do it, He will do it. Uh -huh. So we need to learn to heal, uh -huh. and we need to love the Lord. Uh -huh. All right, every time I, I look at the story in this text, uh -huh. Uh, every time I read this text, uh, 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 Brother Henry, I stand amazed at the greatness of God. Uh, uh, and I don't know about you, but I see the Lord taking this man's soul. Uh, 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 he didn't just save him, Sister Maxwell, but he saved him by grace. Uh -huh. And not only did he just save him, uh -huh, uh, but he transformed him uh -huh, uh, into a great apostle uh -huh, uh, to his Gentiles. Uh -huh, and realized that there is hope uh -huh, for people like you and I uh -huh, uh, to be used of the Lord. Uh -huh. Not a truth to his uh, uh -huh. uh, Saul was a very unlikely uh -huh. a candidate for the service of the Lord. Uh -huh. But he was a man uh -huh. uh, who was feared uh -huh. and hated by Christians uh -huh. and wouldn't be everything uh -huh. in his power uh -huh. to destroy the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. I don't know about you. Uh -huh. My name is the Nick. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And every time uh -huh, you come against David, uh -huh, uh, you just come against David, but uh -huh, you come against the Lord. Uh -huh. And one of the words, uh -huh, uh, you better check your connection. Uh -huh. Make sure your connection is uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. to the Lord. Uh -huh. And when you come against you, uh -huh. uh -huh. and come against your fist brain, uh -huh. and you Mercy, uh -huh. See, I don't know about you, uh -huh. I don't know to be used, uh -huh. I'm by the Lord, uh -huh. not only do I want to be used, uh -huh. I got to be used, uh -huh. I'm by the Lord, uh -huh. you know, the Lord, the last one, uh -huh. is in the transforming business, uh -huh. if you hadn't been transformed, uh -huh. you're not in the circle, uh -huh. with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. if you're you really want to be 
says, Lord, uh, tell him not uh, to uh, move me, uh, uh, I think the broken in his uh, move me, I uh, uh, in my fear, uh, uh, to be in uh, the uh, I don't know what you said, uh, uh, but the Lord uh, uh, is doing something uh, uh, in this season, uh, uh, he's transforming, uh, uh, he's renewing, uh, uh, you gotta know we in the heart. Uh, they get out the boat, uh, and let the boat uh, keep on sailing. Uh, stop trying to roll on uh, to the God in this world. Uh, stop trying to roll on uh, to the people of the devil. Uh, stop telling God uh, to send the best back to you. You gotta learn how to uh, let it go uh, and wait on the Lord. Uh, if you forgive us. Some of us may have questions, may ask questions. 
Can God really use my life? I'm not going to answer that question for each of us. Yes. Next few minutes during this preaching teaching hour. My God. But at the life of the great Apostle Paul and I'm showing you the obstacles that seems to be in the way of his service to God. Obstacles which God had no problems in overcoming by his power and his grace. See, one thing about God, his power and his grace is a bonus to you. By leaning on, holding on, and even acceptance to his work. In other words, uh, the short answer to this question is God can use your life. Now, from these particular verses that we read in this text and the others dealing with Paul's life and his ministry allows us to say why. I say God can. I don't know about you. Uh, first of all, as I go ahead and give you some statements upon this thesis or this message here, uh, your past condition is no obstacle. You said that I'm saved, and since I'm saved, God has forgiven me. He's erased my past. Well, some of us, our erasing must not be any good. <laughs> because we still read the past. Our erasing must have been broken. Because we're still dreaming about our past. Uh, listen, I, I talk about that quite often because until we can get rid of our past, we really don't know which road to take. Amen. You know, a, a car has, it has drive one, drive two. It also has a park. Yes, it and it also has a reverse. Yes. And most of us spend time in reverse. Yes. I've never understood how the world can you drive a car always in a rear view mirror. <laughs> don't make sense, does it? That simply means you have not forgiven yourself of your past. If you have forgiven yourself of your past, then your miracle can take place. Your, your miracle cannot take place if you always be in smut. Because every time, you, even if you if you dig yourself into an ant hole, do you see them thousands of ants going to come out? But if you left that ant hole alone, you would never have to deal with those other particles. I can't hear nobody. It doesn't matter who was hurt. It doesn't matter on who sidetracked you. If you leave it alone, then when God can know that it down in his heart, in your heart, that he has something to work with. But one thing about God is that I'm not God cannot work with your past. And the reason he cannot work with your past, uh, Brother Clifton, you chose that past. And most of us chose it without God. Nobody. Nobody. Let's say you had a past with no God. I can use you, I can beat you up. I can't hear nobody. Yeah. What I'm saying this morning is the fact that God bless you with a brand new car. And you still worried about who don't like you riding in your car. God bless you with a brand new house. You drive around the block before you go home and see who's not watching. Baby, I want you to see, I want you to see me riding. I'm going to open the window so you can see him. Amen. Oh, I'm saying you really mean this. Yes. 
and you really want to wake up and smell the coffee. All right now. Every now and then, you ought to have a funeral on your past. Every now and then. Well, Lord, you ought to shake yourself up. Peace yourself. Because I'm not in the agreement, leave me alone. If I'm dreaming, don't wake me up. should not be an option. Sister Sylvia, your past shouldn't wake you up. That's over with. Should never wake you up and say nothing to you. Your past experience in this world should never challenge you. In other words, you ought to be better than your past. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matter of fact, yeah. you ought to have more respect for your now than yeah. you did your past. Yeah. 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 Yes, indeed. Yeah, glory. Glory, glory, glory. According Ooh. to Paul's still early. According to Paul's own testimony. Brother Good, he was guilty of doing everything in his power to put Christians to death. Paul tells us something about the past. Paul was a murderer. He was rebellion against the Lord Jesus, a religious he was a man to be envy, but intentionally. He was as wicked as any man, any man could be ever walk the face of the earth. But the Bible, the Bible indicates, and let us know that Paul, Saul, Paul gave his approval to the murder of Stephen. Since he guarded the clothes of those who stoned the preaching deacon to death. Paul was a wicked man, but this proved to be no obstacle to the grace of God's power, saving power of the Lord. When Paul received Jesus into his heart, uh, he was changed forever by the grace of God. Somebody help me here. I don't know about you, but let me tell you, every person here this afternoon, your past is no obstacle to the future of the Lord's work. Regardless of what you did before you received your Savior's grace. Uh, it matters no longer uh, when he saved your soul. Uh, he watched your past away forever. Uh, it's just a thought if you got a brand new start uh, at that precise moment in the Lord. Uh, in fact, the Bible refers to that event as a new birth. That's over in John the third chapter. It's very good to seven verses. Uh, somebody else is preaching here, preaching. Uh -huh. uh, that's three records of your past, your deeds, and the world today. Uh -huh. 
Now, first is the record you carry in your mind. Now, uh -huh. and secondly, there is a record carry by all those you knew. Uh -huh. Oh, what the past was before. Uh -huh. Now, thirdly, there is a record carried by Satan. Uh -huh. And he will throw your past up to you at any time. Uh -huh. But may I remind us right now uh -huh, that your day that he even thought about it that remembered my past. Uh -huh. My friends and family may remember my past and even don't say nah. I surely remembered my past, uh -huh. but God did I have been blessed in my past, uh -huh. and it is no obstacle uh -huh, to him using me now. Uh -huh. In other words, I'm in my future now. Uh -huh. You in your future now. Uh -huh. I stop trying to find things uh -huh. to block your future. Uh -huh. Because you're no longer the same. Uh -huh. uh, even if you wanted to do those things, you cannot do them. Uh -huh. Because the Lord has saved you. Uh -huh. The Lord has brought you uh -huh. into a life uh -huh. like let me give you a sign. Let me give you a notation. I don't care who you think I am. As long as the Lord knows who I am, you have to have him take me through. I don't care how you feel. I guarantee you, I won't spend no time uh -huh, trying to change your mind, uh -huh, or change your heart, uh -huh, so you still deal with uh -huh, the devil you always did. Uh -huh, you can't deal with no devil, uh -huh, you can't save no devil, uh -huh, you can't make no devil be no believer. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> 
choice to make in this life. You, you're not too old, you're not too young. It's just when your mindset falls in and says, Lord, I need you. <laughs> and he, somebody say he'll do it. He'll show me do it. Even your character won't keep the Lord from using you. No matter what situation that you are in, hurry up. Give it, don't let nothing fall in your heart. Hurry up and give it over to the Lord. The enemy will use that little thing and destroy your whole future. Yes, it will. Don't trust that. Because see, when the enemy comes to destroy you, no man pride waiting on you. 
See, if you can ever get pride in that, minister, Maxwell, you won't come back around. Pride is the greatest, the worst demon. Great and worse at the same time. You get that pride in your belly, in your heart, you lose everything that God has for you. Because God can't handle a prideful spirit. He won't handle a prideful spirit. That pride will come and you don't even know what's happening. And don't think you right all the time. Somebody say hallelujah. Don't fall in that sugar boot. Because that sugar boot turns to something else. <laughs> Don't do it. Let God use you, not your past. And then you pass. Because I'm like this, if it was any good, you still have it. Oh, Lord. Come on. Come on. You may be saying, well, Bishop, I've, I, I, I've got no my path, but you had to left it. As long as you're making decisions based on your path, you're still there. Yeah. Amen. God cannot use that to God. He said God delivered you and brought you out. He brought you out, you won't still be there. So I challenge you. I challenge you to let go and let God. Somebody says tight, but it's right. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, clap those hands. It's a lot of time. Tell him thank you. What God has for me, it is for me. What God has for me, it is for me. I know that he will bring me down. God has for me, it is for me. What God has for me, it is for me. You say I'm a preacher. I have 